Saturday morning, the Experts Program starts off, and Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, is joining us right now. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Doing pretty good. Looks like we have an interesting topic for today, and it has to do with gasoline vehicles becoming, well, being made obsolete around yeah. the world. And what's the latest that you've heard about this? Well, there was an article that came out last week talking about how the United Kingdom has accelerated their move to, to basically ban the sale of gasoline and diesel-powered cars. It was 2035, so 15 years from now, and now they've brought that back to 2030, so just 10 years from now. And they're doing this, of course, because of the concerns around climate change and trying to reduce uh, the carbon footprint. And they're going to make, essentially, outlaw the sales of all gas and diesel-powered cars. So that just leaves electric vehicles as the only alternative for car buyers in England in 2030. And following on the heels of that and the recognition that the Biden administration that's coming in next year will probably be more climate focused than uh, the Trump administration. Several car manufacturers, including uh, Tesla, Uber, and a few others, have formed a uh, conglomerate called Zeta. And the idea behind it is that they're going to advocate for the same thing, to basically force the United States to ban the sale of diesel and gasoline powered cars by 2030. So it looks like the internal combustion engine's life is uh, maybe coming to a close. Mm -hmm. Well, I could also see that there would be pushback. I don't know that the big motor companies like Ford and Chrysler and GM and so forth are ready to abandon the believe that they can do so in less than 10 years time. I think that they probably see that the California edict of 2035 is certainly going to push them. But boy, I'd have a hard time believing that they're going to really be able to accomplish this because, you know, the, the one of the features, and I think it's actually a, a pretty good feature of our system of government, is that it is very slow and plodding. But the reason that it's slow and plodding, that we can't make these types of rapid changes, is because that there's a recognition that compromise is really the best way to go that really takes into consideration the rights of all parties involved. And so the American system of government is pretty much designed to avoid allowing the passion of the day to rule instantly. It's designed to make people take a step back, take a deep breath and say, okay, what are we trying to accomplish here? And what's the best way to do it? And how can we do it in such a way that doesn't damage all stakeholders, you know, that ends up being a win-win for everybody involved. Now, I know a lot of the advocacy folks, the, you know, the folks that are uber advocates on the side of no more gas engines by 2030 or 2035, they don't necessarily like that. But then you also tend to find that a lot of times the most ardent advocates of any position, they take a, a rather cavalier attitude that they don't really care what anybody else thinks. You know, that's not a way for a representative democracy to work. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I think the timeline, especially in the United States, that is, you know, so much bigger than England and has doesn't have the public transportation infrastructure that the United Kingdom has. I think 2030 is too aggressive a target. 2035 is, is an aggressive target, but a lot of car companies have basically settled on, on that date and are retooling and re-engineering to hit that target. So asking them to suddenly compress that by five years is probably not doable. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think the manufacturing capability is there yet as well. I mean, I think there are, everybody's getting into the, the electric vehicle manufacturing business. You know, uh, Ford's coming out with a, a new pickup truck that's an EV uh, that supposedly has the same power and the same capabilities, lower range, obviously, than the typical gas or diesel powered truck. But um, I think to your point, it's going to be one of those things that is going to generate good conversation. And uh, hopefully the outcome will be one that is acceptable and and not damaging to one side or another. One of the other interesting things that I saw yesterday is there is now a move afoot in the California legislature to replace the state-imposed gas tax of 50 cents a gallon at the pump with a mileage tax. And what they're looking at is the fact that all of these people with hybrids and EVs, quote-unquote, aren't paying their fair share of the gas tax because that's what goes to maintain the roads. And as they said, every vehicle, no matter what type of engine it has, in it, uses the roads and causes a, yep. an impact upon them. So now there's a move afoot in Sacramento to come up with a way to impose a mileage tax. And I just wonder if it's going to be, you know, because we have a one-sided legislature in California, will it end up being some sort of a gradual thing or will it take into consideration all of the people with cars that can't be retrofitted for a mileage tax and say, well, you know, we'll continue the tax at the pump for all the gas-powered vehicles, but for all you folks with electric cars or hybrids, you're going
going to pay this per mile. I mean, I don't see why that would be a problem just to cleave it down the middle that way and instead of saying it's got to be either or. Yeah. And to your point, a lot of car insurance companies are looking at using the same methodology for pricing their insurance policies, basically saying, you know, if you drive more than the guy across the street, then you should pay more than the guy across the street as opposed to both of you paying the same premium just because of the age and type of vehicle that you have. All right. Um, and all of this is because of all the electronics built into cars. It's easy to track this information now. Well, this will be more conversation or grist for the mill, so to speak. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> we'll continue talking about these issues with Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group. Online, AlvarezTG.com, at AlvarezTG. That's the Twitter handle. And Luis, the toll-free number for the iTeam. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM. That's 866-784-8326.